Hello and welcome to another episode of Optics Trade Debates. I'm Andras. Hello, my name is Taylor. And here we have uh, Steiner's famous series of marine binoculars. These are the Commander uh, 7x50 in all sorts of configurations. But there is True. also a, we will come to the, the model range later. So when I think of uh, marine binoculars, this is the form factor that comes to mind. So and the design and the design. Like so this series has some history behind it. True, true. Can you elaborate a bit on that? A Commander is, I would say, quite an old series made by by Steiner. It was Commander first. It was just Commander. Then it was Commander XP, and so on. So they are they are uh, updating it every couple of years. But lately they had two editions: the Commander uh, Laser Rangefinder. This was this one and the Commander Global. This was this one. Um, they are top of the line of Steiner marine binoculars, but I also, I also think they are top of the line of all marine binoculars. I don't know of any other manufacturer that would still persist in this market, that would still try to make something a decent competitor to this series. I don't think there is any. I know that uh, Zeiss stopped producing their 7x50 marine binoculars Swarovski also had some experiments with this uh, this type of uh, products in in the 90s, I think, and in 2000, in the 90s, and also stopped. Leica never produced anything in this way, in this price segment and so on. So, basically, the Steiner is dominating the premium segment of marine binoculars completely. They have uh, six models in this series, so they have seven by 30, seven by 30 by com with compass. 7x50 standard model, 7x50 with compass, 7x50 with laser range finding capabilities, and 7x50 Commander Global. Uh, the difference between this model and this model is that uh, this one is self calibrated uh, in all the regions around the world. While this one, if you buy it here in Europe, it will be calibrated for use in the European sector of the world, uh, if you go to Australia, New Zealand and so on, then you will need to buy a local version or a version which is um, made for that region uh, so that it shows the compass shows accurately. Um, well, if we look at the form factor um, in the outer appearance, it is similar to the Navigator Pro, right? Yeah. So to the entry level of Steiner's mm -hmm. marine binoculars. but. Uh, it is advantages in most aspects, right? It is better. It it's is made in Germany. Better. It offers better optical performance, really best possible light transmission rate, uh, sharpness, uh, build quality, and so on and so on. Uh, it also offers wider field of view, around 130 meters, I think, while the navigator is a little bit narrower. And uh, the edge-to-edge -edge sharpness is much better on the Commander. Normally, better materials are also used for, for the uh, production of Commander, so it will withstand more. It has a longer warranty, it has 30 years warranty instead of 10. It's a really premium binocular. So a 7 times magnification is a standard for marine use. True. So it, it is the best to prevent, I would say, seasickness, right? Yeah. A bigger magnification is, of course... Uh, it's really, really hard to, to use. On a yeah. boat. There are many other manufacturers which try to implement uh, image stabilization. So they offer higher magnification, but with an image stabilization. I do still think that premium, really premium perform uh, performing optics, it's a better choice if you have to choose between image stabilization or better optical performance. I think better optical performance with lower magnification is a better choice. They have a dual di diopter setting, one on each eyepiece, and no yeah. focusing button. No, they say this is a sport autofocus system, so you just set it once. You, you look at the distant object, and you first set one eye, the other eye should be closed. Then you close the first eye and set the, the other eye, let's say left and right, and then it's set. And you do this only once, from then onwards, uh, the eyes will focus by itself. All of these uh, binoculars also have a system that you're able to mark where is your zero. So you just pull this up like this and then you have a mark where is your zero. You set it there and then you always know, okay, this is my 
my zero and so it's always set really for, nice for your rules. On, the yeah. on, on all of the global has this in, in uh, gray, all other models have this in yellow, so it's really nicely visible. Um, um, with this um, focusing that you just mentioned, mm -hmm. so the, we could call it the autofocus, right? Almost, yeah. Um, there is, it is a little bit problematic if we wish to observe objects that are really close by, right? Yeah, anything what is closer than 30 meters, it's a little bit problematic for our eyes. What about the, uh, in the yeah. twilight? In the Where twilight is much better than with the central focus because in, with the central focus you're always focus hunting. It's called, yeah. you're always hunting for focus because it's so hard to see because there is not enough light. With these binoculars this is not a problem because you only focus it once during daytime and then you know that your setting is correct and second of all because this is a poro prism because this is of a premium pair of binoculars uh, the light transmission rate will be really astonishing so in low light use this will be really great even though I, I have even seen hunters using those in low light even they're not meant for, for yeah. hunting. Poro prisms do perform great in twilight right? Yeah true. What is also uh, a big advantage with this sport autofocus system is the waterproofness because with any central focusing there is a whole mechanism which you need to to seal on so many different places uh, with this sport autofocus you only seal with one o-ring probably uh, just one um, place where water could go in but uh, with, uh, with all other systems it's really hard to make a decent uh, waterproofness and all of those binoculars are really there waterproof. You can just throw them in the water. And, and on top of that, you get a floating strap in nice yeah, yellow colors. So you can see them from far away. Yeah, far so away. what is also important with the Commander, all the materials used are, are of such kind that they are, um, they can withstand water, salt in the water, sun, and all other elements. So they're really robust and they will really last a long time. Uh, a nice feature is also that they have a thumb rest which is really really soft. Yeah, and, and I was looking that th this model with laser rangefinder uses have. a little bit different. Uh, even the, even the material is a part for the carrying yeah. strap, the solution is a little it's bit different. different. Yeah. So, um, so all other models except the laser rangefinding models have this click system when you just click the. It's really easy, simple, and it yeah. works. I should open this one. Yeah, it just you just click. The, the carrying strap inside and it's really slick and really nice, elegant. If you wish to unclick it, you have to push here the, the button under the, the rubber to, to release it. A really great system. This, I think it's click lock, it's called. Then we have the typical poor prism eye cups, yeah. which are not the, the classic twist in, twist mm -hmm. out, but are actually made out of rubber and you can fold them in. How are you can they? just fold them like this, but uh, in long-term use. So, so, in long, first of all, what is the problem with glasses is that when you, you fold them down like this, now I can use them normally with glasses, sooner or later they will just pop up. So you have to fold them again. The second thing what happens is that you can wear this out if you use them a lot. And then you have to buy a replacement. Though. Yeah, so if you have astigmatism so that you are not able to set the diopter in a way that you would be able to use them without glasses, this can be a little bit problematic. Yeah? And they also come with these uh, nice wing parts, which yeah. I think is nice for the sea where there is a lot of reflection from mm -hmm. coming from this. And water. <laughs> and water and everything, so yeah. this is quite nice. But they also put this uh, winged eye cups on their hunting models and others. Yeah, so I think they're this famous is, for this. Like, like their trademark, yeah. having yeah. winged eye cups. So no, no, uh, nothing, uh, no stray light comes from any side. Uh, what you also get with uh, all of these binoculars is rubberized, um, not rubberized, but rubber, made out of rubber, the lens covers, yeah, which, which, are, which are quite oversized. Deep, so yeah. they fit nicely onto the, on the oculars. And uh, front lens covers are uh, attached to the scope. You're not able to remove them that easily. That's a good thing. And it's really easy to to put them back in. So you got to mention, you just get a lens cloth, instruction manual, straps, mm -hmm. and so on. And they come in a nice, really big box. And this box is perfect. And this storing okay. case is just, just great. It look, even looked like a binocular from outside. So. We have customers who bought like a navigator, 
But when they saw the, the carrying bag, they said, can I get a carrying bag from Commander, from my navigator? Okay, but this, I think you can even, but uh, the point is that uh, these Commanders are really premium, top class. Um, and so are the accessories, right? Yeah. Uh, the laser rangefinding model, what is the, the range of the laser? Uh, it's 1,700 meters. It has no ballistic software or anything. It's not meant for shooting, it's meant for that you're able to see on the sea how far away are you from the shore or from other, uh, from other um, boats or ships. Uh, and it also offers scan mode. So you're able to so just to push down and push button, yeah. it just does the, uh, the, it repeats the measurement every second or something like that or even on smaller periods. Uh, it goes from 25 meters to 1,700 meters. Uh, it's a nice addition. This one was uh, introduced last, I think, in 2018. All others were introduced. So you basically have a lot of choices based on the mm -hmm. application. Yeah. And you can choose. And what is the price difference between the, the most basic model and, the, let's say, the global? I think that the most basic model is around 1,000 euros, somewhere in the vicinity of 1,000 or, or euros, while the Commander Global is around 2,000 uh, and something. So almost twice the price. I'm talking about the model without the compass. Um, the laser range funding model is also priced in the vicinity of the Commander Global. So if you wish to sail around the world, go for the Global version. Yeah, yeah definitely. So the normal version has a compass which is mechanical and in the lower 20% of the field of view, in the right eye, in the right tube, uh, you always see the constant reading of the, of the compass. And it's also illuminated. During the daytime, there is a small window up here where the sun goes in and you have an illuminated uh, reading of the compass. During the nighttime or low light time, here is the place for the battery. And you have a button here where you can turn on the illumination of the compass. Uh, majority of users prefer the mechanical compass against the digital compass, which only gives you an uh, LED reading in the center of the field of view. Uh, I also think this is nicer. Uh, I already told the fact that uh, Steiner was the company which first made the, the compass available on the binoculars. So they are still, um, I would say, they are continuing with this tradition. And I know that they were doing the, some of their models in the past together with Sunto, the Finnish company which produces compasses. So I think we covered most of the things. Now let's go what is really positive and where is still some room for improvement. So Andras, what do you think the positive sides? I would say that the whole form factor and the fact that they are made really, I would say, sturdy, robust, and the design. Uh, the design, really beautiful, definitely. Yeah. If you, when you think of marine binoculars, this is what comes to mind. So this mm. is a typical marine design. And, and they're uh, really rugged. Yeah, really it's rugged. Very positive. Um, the compass is great. The them. compass is great for, for the model mm -hmm. that has it. I think it's also great that they made an universal model for those who might benefit mm -hmm. from that. Yeah, true. Even though it's a little bit more expensive, but nevertheless. Then this sport autofocus also has its benefits. Especially in low light and with regards to waterproofness. That's right. Um, and the fact that you can really easily adjust, um, yeah. let's say, um, connect the strap to the binoculars. Click lock system. Is you don't have fun. to watch any reviews because it's simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just put them in and that's yeah. it. But there are reviews how to remove them, that you have to push inside. You have to push in quite yeah. strongly, yeah. yeah um, these are all positive. Uh, also the price point, I think that when we are talking around between 1000 and 1500 euros for the basic models, this is a really good price for such a premium product. And if you Let's look, be honest, look, even the case is yeah, it out just, of this world, really. It's really, really nice. Because let's be honest, if you look at the premium high class binoculars from Leica, Swarovski, um, Zeiss, they all cost more. They are not meant for marine use, but still. So I would say that the pricing of Steiner is really good. You get the really good quality for, for the amount of money you pay. Uh, what they also offer, and I think it's really great, it's like they offer a refurbish program that if you're using it for, let's say, 10, 15, 20 years, 
and you, you break the binoculars or you damage the binoculars, which is quite common on boats, on sailing boats and so on, you can just send it back to the factory or to us, to, to optics rate, and for around, I think, 250 or 300 euros, you get it completely refurbished, so it's like new. You get back almost the new binoculars. Really, they repair everything, they replace everything, it's like getting a new binoculars. What about the disadvantages or things? The disadvantages, it is, I think, the, the eyepieces for, for glass wearers. Yeah, of course. This is, but also on the sea, it's better to, to wear lenses. So I would say this is a disadvantage. Um, hmm. Other disadvantages, there are not many. Maybe a field of view. Field of view could have been a little bit bigger. Four or seven times magnification. Yeah, they have like 130 meters. They would have 150 meters. That would be, be great. Apart from that, there are not many disadvantages. Um, we do have uh, an in-depth review of mm -hmm. some of the models individually, so feel free to check these reviews out and see you in those videos. See you check in those them out. Video. Bye. Bye.